Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this gathering. And I want to thank you, first of all, I'm Pastor Kendall, and I want to thank you for making this service a part of your Christmas celebration. Tonight, we have the sacred privilege of retelling the story, that beautiful story of God's love for humanity, of sending his son into a sin-sick world to be our Lord and Savior. I'm sure you're going to enjoy this rendition tonight. I'm pretty positive of that. Uh, we're using a humorous um, musical drama that was written years ago by my wife, Karen. She didn't know I was going to say this, so she's blushing back there. And uh, we've done this uh, a few years back, and we used adult players. Tonight, it's a mix of our pre-K through fifth graders and some adult players in the, telling the story. Thanks for the privilege for us to be able to retell the story, to share our faith, and to celebrate Jesus' birth together. I invite you to join me in prayer. Awesome and glorious God, we thank you. Thank you for your love poured out on us and the opportunity to share that with one another and with your world in such desperate need of you. God bless this gathering and each soul precious in your sight. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. I do have a few announcements. Um, if you're a member and usually get the offering envelopes, they're in the back on a cart near, uh, near the kitchen by the Fellowship Hall. And back there also are some devotion books for January, February of the upper room. And you're welcome to take any of those that you would like. I want to remind the kids and the teachers and the parents that there's no uh, Christian ed classes next Sunday. Worship is at 1030, and if throughout this season you haven't sung your favorite Christmas carol, come that Sunday and you will get to do that. Uh, tonight's worship service, it's going to be posted on YouTube through our website, and you saw that little insert that has some of the other connections for all of our tech-savvy folks. With that, I want to invite you to stand and extend the love of Christ to one another. You may be seated, and at this time, at this time, together we'll join with Shane and Angie Sorg family in, writing, in lighting the Advent candles. On this holy night, we come with hope. We come in humble faith. We come with exceeding joy. We light the last purple candle representing peace. For it was Isaiah the prophet who said, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And now we light the white candle, proclaiming Jesus Christ, who is at the center of Christmas. We remember that this baby Jesus, who we celebrate tonight, is the true light who came into the world to overcome sin. Darkness and death, for he who follows him, will not walk in darkness, but he will light of the life. We, we, we also place the nativity and Mary symbol on our banner. They tell of the wonderful story of hope, faith, joy, peace, and love. For love came down at Christmas. Love all lovely, love divine, love was born at Christmas. Star and angels gave the sign.
Let us pray, pray together, it's found in your bulletin. Heavenly Father, give us the same courage as Mary and Joseph, who bravely stepped out in faith in obedience to God's divine will. Let us stand in wonder as the shepherds did when they responded in joy to the message the angels proclaimed. Father God, grant us peace where there is chaos, light where there is darkness, and love where hatred resides. O God of divine miracles, we put our hope in the coming of Christ. O come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Amen. Now please turn in your red hymnals to Psalm or page 230 and sing O Little Town of Bethlehem together. You may remain seated. Good evening. I'm investigative reporter Eugene from BHB UMC TV. I'm live on location here in Bethlehem to bring you the rest of the story. I'm here following uh, the latest lead about a newborn king that was born tonight in this bustling city. Boy. Bethlehem is sure full of busy people tonight. I suppose you're all waiting for, to get a glimpse of the royal party. And that's why I'm here. Eugene from BHB UMC TV, here to bring you the rest of the story. Let's talk with some of the locals and see what we can find out. Have you heard anything about? Have you? Anybody? 
Huh. Well, I don't know. Have you heard? Have you heard? Hey, watch out! Where are you going? I'm so sorry. We were in a hurry and I didn't see you. Are you all right? Yes, I'm fine. My goodness, why the rush? Our father sent us out to get some clean hay for his stable. You'll never guess what happened. What? A baby was born. A baby? No kidding. Let me guess. It was a baby calf. No. Uh, maybe it was a baby horse? No. I know. It was a lamb, right? It was a lamb. It's got to be a lamb. It was a lamb. I'm right, aren't I? No, a baby, a real boy baby. He was born a couple hours ago, and we're bringing him some, we're bringing them some nice clean hay to lay the baby on. Hay for a bed, huh? Well, I guess, if you're born in a stable. Anyway, speaking of babies, I heard rumors that a king was born right here in Bethlehem tonight. Do you know anything about that? A king? No, sir. Hey, here's a thought. Maybe that stable baby is the new king. <laughs> I crack myself up. Well, Mary and Joseph may just be ordinary people, but they sure are nice. And the baby, now he's something special. Yeah, real special. Yeah, yeah. But you're sure you haven't seen or heard anything about a new king? No, sir, and we better get going. Sorry, we couldn't help. All right, then. Good night. We'll see you. Well, I'll keep my eyes open and, and my ears open. <laughs> a baby born in a stable. Well, folks, we're not having much help or much luck here talking to the locals. I think maybe I'll head over to the neighborhood inns and see if anyone is housing that royal party. That's a plan. That's a good plan. I'm Eugene from BHB UMC TV, here to bring you the rest of the story. For those who are just joining us, I'm Eugene from BHB UMC TV, and I'm here in Bethlehem looking for the newborn king. I didn't get much help from the locals, so I'm going to try the innkeepers to see if they can give me any information about the whereabouts of this royal party. Oh, good evening, madam. As proprietor of this hostelry, you wouldn't perchance by, be quartering royal lineage in your rooms tonight. Say what? Is there a king in the house? Well, why didn't you just say that in the first place? I'm full up with travelers, business, businessmen, and just between the two of us, maybe a few friendly mice, but I certainly have no kings. Well, thank you for your time. Good night. Oh, excuse me, sir. You look like you might be an innkeeper. Is your establishment near here? My place is down the street. What about it? Do you have rooms booked for the royal entourage tonight? King's Royal, what? Never mind. <laughs> ah, ha, this must be the place. Good evening, sir. I'm looking for a king. Would you be happening to lodge the uh, royal family this evening? Royal family? Royal family? Does this look like a place where kings would hang out? Well, 
your sign does say King's Inn, so I thought... Listen, mister, this is Bethlehem, the city of David. You know King David. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. No royalty, right? Right. And even if his kingliness should happen to come by looking for a room tonight, I'll have to tell him what I've told the last hundred people who have banged on my door. Oh, yeah? What's that? When Caesar... Yeah. Room at the end. When Caesar Augustus gave the decree that a Roman world census be taken of thee, my, my room's filled up, that's lucky for me, but there's no room at the end. People kept coming by day and by night. From the floor to the ceiling, I packed them in tight. They paid up in full, much to my delight. But there's no room at the inn. Some came alone, some came with their broods. They're taking my beds, they're eating my food. I only charge what an innkeeper should. Ha, ha, ha. There's no room at the inn. 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 Don't think any ideas were a pretty fair lot. At innkeeper school, it's all we've been taught. Serve with a smile and take all that you've got. So sorry, but there's no room at the end. Well, here's the last place, so I guess I'll give that a try. Excuse me, sir, but would you by chance have rooms occupied by royalty tonight? Ah, ha, ha, ah, ha, ha. We may have some wealthy men and dignitaries staying here, but surely there is no royalty among that bunch. Why do you ask? Well, I heard rumors that a king was born in your city of Bethlehem tonight. One of the local shepherds heard reports of it, so I, Eugene from BHB UMC TV, am here searching for the rest of the story. I haven't come up with a thing. Well, now, don't despair. Tomorrow's another day. After a good night rest, I'm sure you'll figure out things. I suppose you're right. In that case, could I please have a room for the night? room was occupied hours ago. Caesar Augustus commanded a census be taken of the entire Roman world. Why do you think there are so many people in town today? Well, I thought maybe they were here to see the new king. But you must have some place, some place that I can get some rest. I'm awfully sorry, but I have really no room. In fact, I don't even have a stable for you. I took a pity on a poor, desperate man and his very pregnant wife to let them have that. And no too soon, I heard she had a little boy. Desperate indeed. Can you imagine giving birth in a stable and having your baby start out life in a cow shed with the livestock? Poor kid, probably won't amount to much. What a shame. Oh well, that's life. I guess some of us are just born more privileged than others. Never mind. I guess I should be searching for the king instead of sleeping anyhow. That's what a good reporter would do. Thanks for your help. Good night, Eugene. I hope you find your king. 
Well, folks, I think it's time for plan B. Go back to the source. I guess I'll have to hike these hills and talk with that shepherd again. Maybe he can shed some light on this mysterious king business. Don't go away. We'll be right back. You know, it's a long hike in those hills. While we wait for our reporter to return, hopefully he will return and not get lost, um, let us take this moment to give our Christmas offerings. May I have the ushers come forward, please? Well, thanks for keeping us tuned in. I'm Eugene from BHB UMC TV. I'm here live in the hills outside of Bethlehem looking for the shepherd to help us find the king. Phew, that sure was a long hike. I'm sorry folks, but I, I'm gonna have to take a little rest. I'm gonna, I'm gonna climb up on this rock here and just take a few breathers. <sighs> wow. Sure is a beautiful night. Perfect, perfect night for a king to be born. Just look, look at all those stars. Not even the king's diamonds, his rubies, his gold, his pearls in all their royal sp splendor with a sparkling gem staring down at them right now is as lovely as this. It sure is beautiful. Do you see the heavenly light like diamonds set in the sky sparkling with brilliance beauty and brightness encased in the velvet night all the splendor and majesty as far as the eye can see could a king compare his jewels so rare 
to the riches that lay before me. On a night like this, on a night like this, on a night like this, would a king be born, be born? Do you hear the breezes sing, melodies pure and sweet? It captures my heart. I join in the song with heavenly harmony. Symphonies fill the air with music lovely to hear. Softly and gently speaking of glory with sounds that are barely there on a night like this on a night like this on a night like this would a king be On a night like this, where loveliness truly exists, if a king be born awaiting a throne, could his kingdom be better? Hey, easy boys, I'm no threat. Put, put your weapons down. Okay. Oh, there, that's better. My business? Well, I'm Eugene from BHB UMC TV, and I'm here tracking the story about a king that was born this very night. In fact, I got a tip from one of your shepherd buddies. That's why I'm out here. I'm looking for information my source. Have you, have any of you seen him? Maybe. What does he look like? I'll hold this. Well, he was, um, he's about, the, well, about, yeah, this tall. And, well, let's see, he's about, well, about, yeah, about this wide. 
And he was wearing uh, robes just <coughs> like you guys. And let's see, he carried a big stick just like you. What was the guy's name? Name? Hmm, yeah, let's see. Did I mention he was carrying a big stick just like yours? Listen, mister, these hills go on for miles and miles, and we're not the only shepherds around these parts. The guy you described could be any shepherd from here to Timbuktu. So if you're going to find your shepherd, you better start looking. Yeah, start looking. <laughs> oh, it's going to take me weeks to find him out here. Well, you need the shepherd to find the king, right? Do you have a choice? Oh, well, folks, it looks like this investigation is going to take a little bit longer than I had originally uh, expected. Tune in to your local station, BHB UMC TV, for updates. This is Eugene on a journey to find a shepherd, to find a king, in hopes of bringing you the rest of the story. have just passed and now we return you to BHB UMC TV live hey you hey are you by chance that shepherd who told me about a king being born in Bethlehem yeah I remember you you're pretty hard to forget we don't see we don't really see your kind around these parts Finally! It's taken me weeks wandering around these hills, but I finally found you. Will you please tell me again, what happened that night you heard about the king being born? Well, it happened like this. My fellow shepherds and I... You might want to write this down so oh, you don't okay. forget. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. My fellow shepherds and I were tending our flocks of sheep by night like usual. Then all of a sudden, an angel appeared, and the glory of the Lord surrounded us. We were terrified. We didn't know what to do. Then the angel said, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy for all people today in the town of David. A Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You, you will find a baby wrapped in clothes and laying in a manger. And then a great multitude of angels appeared and sang the most glorious song. Music still rings in my ears. It was so beautiful. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. And then, just like that, they were gone. 
I guess the angels went back to heaven. Well, we couldn't stand it another minute. We all went to Bethlehem to see what the Lord had shown us. Well, did you see him? No offense, but I'm sure they wouldn't let just anyone in to see the new king. We sure did. We found the mother whose name was Mary and, the, and her husband Joseph all huddled together in the stable with the barn animals. And just as the angel had told us, there he was, the baby wrapped in warm clothes, sleeping all cozy in a manger filled with hay. Wait, what? Tell me that again. We found Mary and Joseph and the baby in a stable. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why does that all sound so familiar? Mary, Joseph, a stable? I think I heard this all before. A king born in a cow shed. Fresh hay, a new baby born in a stable. Ah, oh, I miss them. They were right under my nose and I missed them. How could I have been so blind? Now I'll never find them. What a fool I've been. Some reporter I turned out to be. I'm Eugene from BHB UMC TV on the hunt for a story that I didn't get the rest of. Signing off. No, wait. According to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph will probably take the baby to Jerusalem to present them to the Lord. The law says every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice. Yes, lucky break. This is big. No, this is huge. Thank you, thank you. Folks, I'm on my way to Jerusalem. Today, I may see the king. This is Eugene from BHB, UMC TV. Stay tuned. I'm on a mission to get the rest of the story. No, wait, I'll come with you. Come okay. on, Chief. Watch him grow and learn, and 
and he likewise will teach you many wonderful things. Bless your family. Bless you. Hello, my name is Anna. May I see the child? Oh, he is a beautiful baby. May I? See the child? He is the Messiah. In our holy writings, it says, for unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increasing of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. He's just a baby. Could he truly be the king? But there was something, something about him. I don't know, I'm just, I'm overwhelmed with a feeling that I can't put my finger on. Shepherd, what was it the angel said to you that night on the hill? They sang, glory to God in the high, wait, 
I remember, the angel said, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. There was no trumpet fanfares, no pomp, no circumstance, no royal procession, no robes, no riches. Just a humble man and woman and their newborn son. My heart hurts to know that I turned a deaf ear to the message that you gave me that night. If only I had listened, then I would have known where to look and what to look for. To think that I almost completely missed finding them. But now, oh, now that I've seen the baby, I'm, I'm overcome with joy. That's what it is, joy. I've seen the Messiah, the, the Savior. Shepherd, what did the angels say to you on that night? They sang, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to men on whom his favor rests. I can hardly imagine what that little baby's life's going to be as he grows up. I'm sure it's going to make for a fascinating story. My reporter radar tells me that I'd better keep my eyes and ears open and to expect the unexpected. This is going to be an awesome assignment. Folks, keep it tuned here for future updates. I'm Eugene from BHB UMC TV on a mission to get you the rest of the story. <laughs> Night. You know, the wonderful thing is, we do know the rest of the story. Indeed, history, scripture, lives transformed all tell us that Jesus was born. He grew up pretty much like you and me. He grew up in a family and, and likely did some of the same things that you kids are doing today and that we did as we were growing up. But at the same time, Jesus was different. He was more different than any other person who ever lived because his life was without sin. Fully human, fully God. He was a personification of love and humility. He healed many people of their afflictions. He taught the word of God with authority. He judged fairly both those who needed correction and those who needed mercy and he gave his life sacrificially on the cross of Calvary. 1 <clears throat> Peter 3 says, For Christ suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit. And John 3 tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Jesus spoke of himself. He said, 
I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The opportunity comes for each of us each and every day to remain in the darkness of our own sin and our own selfishness, or, or will we walk in the light of Jesus Christ, cleansed by his purifying flame, bearing the light wherever we go and whatever we do? Will you allow the King to be born anew in your heart on a night like this? I ask you to ponder that question as we pass the light of Christ to one another. Thank you. 
receive the Lord's benediction tonight. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Go now in the peace and the love of Christ to love and serve God and the world. Amen. Thank you for coming, everyone. Please join in the final song.